If you've wanted your produce to be farmed inside the shell of a former New Jersey nightclub, prepare to be happy. Joining us to talk about Aero Farms and the technology behind their indoor farm is Michael Corrin, reporter at Quartz. How's it going, Michael? Very well. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> Absolutely. It's good to have you here. So uh, indoor growing used to be pretty cost prohibitive. What's, what's changed here? Um, so the primary driver is actually the cost of LED lights, both the upfront capital, so how much do these bulbs cost, and then how much does it cost to operate them? So how much light can you get at per watt? Uh, in the last two to three years, we've seen exponential drops in, in both of those things. So efficiency is uh, way up, and then the cost is, has gone uh, down faster than anyone expected. Wow. So um, how, how effective then are LEDs versus, I mean, I imagine it's been kind of the use of fluorescent lights up until, up until kind of the price is driven down. Is there any change as far as uh, efficiency or, or any benefits there? So they've, they've switched technologies. Uh, they've been using LEDs for a while, but you're right. So CFLs, uh, just incandescents. Uh, which are an order of magnitude in some cases less efficient. Uh, CF, uh, CFLs are, are pretty good, but not close to LEDs. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we've seen that that massive change in, in, in the last few years. Um, and it's being driven by economies of scale, partially, since LEDs are now um, one of the you know, primary uh, bulbs that people are using in their houses, as well as industrial applications. So, obviously, um, when you're doing all, you know, this, this type of farming, Indoors and in a nightclub, which uh, probably sounds a lot more awesome than it actually is in reality. It's just former nightclub. I don't think we're still dancing. <laughs> when I first read this, I was like, "How cool is that? They're farming while you're dancing. Dance with your kale. Yeah, Who see, else hasn't uh, always wanted to do that? Exactly. Um, does this does this type of uh, type of environment? I mean, does it mitigate the need for things like pesticides and everything? Is it? A, I don't know. Is it a healthier environment to be growing uh, this type of food? It's a great question. Uh, and I should add, so it's you know not just the, the cost of bulbs, but the cost of creating controlled environments that mm -hmm. you can grow produce uh, in, in a very precise way. So what we're talking about soon is to actually have plants and lights that are engineered for each other. So you're you're tuning the light frequency uh, and the time of, of of intensity of it to a specific plant uh, species, in some cases a specific subspecies, uh, where you're coming up with varieties that are actually a perfect match for the light itself. Uh, and the, the kind of increase you can get in yield, at least on unit area, is you know 10 times, in some cases 100 times greater than you'll find outdoors. What about water uh, use? Does it use less or about the same? So yeah, that's a great question. So 99% uh, reductions in the amount of water uh, compared wow. to irrigation. So in theory, uh, also what they're saying, uh, what, what the tests, at least in the CB's prototype farms, is much lower uh, use of fertilizers and nutrients and much lower use of pesticides uh, to the point that they're almost growing in relatively sterile conditions. And when you put that, um, that produce in your refrigerator, it will last for weeks instead of days. Wow, that's intense. Um, any any negatives uh, to this type of farming, environmental so, side effects, that sort of stuff? Yeah, always. Uh, it's not free. Uh, you've got to actually power those bulbs somehow. So mm -hmm. if we're just powering them with uh, conventional fossil fuels, it's not necessarily a, a a huge advantage over doing them outdoors, despite them being much more efficient on, a, on an area basis. So that's a big problem. Um, they still haven't proven this at scale. So uh, this is, I would say, beyond the prototype and the, and, the, and the testing stage. And we've just reached the point where it's economically feasible, but we're not seeing uh, massive acreages that can replace what we're growing in California yet. So um, I'd say energy, uh, proof of concept at scale. Uh, and then I think, you know, there's probably going to be some surprises along the way. Yeah, I mean, you can almost envision a future where there are high rises that are nothing but floor after floor after mm -hmm. floor of this type of growing, feeding uh, the overpopulated world. Basically. Run by robots. Yeah, run by robots is probably a Yeah, big, that's key, actually. Yeah. They, they, by cutting out the uh, labor costs, you actually make this much more feasible. For sure.